for good morning ladies and gentlemen commodity tv today here in zurich at the san gotthard hotel we are not in china as you might uh, expect here from the back with me here is don buba the president and ceo of avalon advanced materials uh, you know the company as former avalon rare earth metals and uh, yeah we spoke with him something like two years ago and we want to get of course first an update why the name has changed and what's new with the company don thanks for making the time this morning and uh, yeah, good morning and uh, great to have you here. <laughs> great to see you again. You changed the name. What happened? Well, we had a little shift in the focus of the company. Uh, as you know, for a long, a long time we were focused entirely on rare earth elements. Mm -hmm. And Avalon Rare Metals, our former name, became kind of uh, associated only with rare earths. And most of our investors and shareholders did not know that we were actually a diversified specialty minerals and metals company with other advanced assets, mm -hmm. including a lithium asset as well as a tin asset. Mm -hmm. So both metals are hot. <laughs> and both metals are, are in demand right yeah. now in favor with investors. So we needed to find a way to help investors discover that we were not just a rare earths company. Mm -hmm. So by rebranding to Avalon Advanced Materials, we have sent that signal. And we think advanced materials is a better way to describe our products. Advanced meaning mm -hmm. tech and materials meaning it's not just metals as well. Absolutely, yeah. I would say, yeah, you are in the space of the green metals, I would call it, because all those metals are needed, yeah, for renewable energy, for batteries, yeah, for cars like Tesla, etc. Um, before we come to your lovely lithium project, and also I want to talk about the tin project later on, um, what metals do you have in total? Where are you working? What sites or what properties you are following up? Our top priority project right now is our Separation Rapids Lithium Project, which mm -hmm. is located in northwestern Ontario, Canada, near the town of Kenora. Mm -hmm. The second priority project right now is called East Kempfo, which is a past producing tin mine located in uh, southwestern Nova Scotia, Canada, near Yarmouth. And our third advanced project, of course, was our rare earth project called Nechalacho, which is not just a rare earth project. Yeah. There are also other... Uh, Important rare metals there, including tantalum, niobium, zirconium, beryllium, that all offer mm -hmm. potential opportunities as new technology and material science innovation finds new ways to mm -hmm. exploit their unique properties too. Mm -hmm. So we haven't given up on that chalacho, it's yeah, just it's on hold so right now. Yeah, you, you totally kept, you changed the name, but you kept the metals. That's right. <laughs> okay, let's talk about your most important project, I would say by now, it's the lithium project, yeah, the lithium uh, rapid, uh, separation rapid project, sorry. Um, so what's up with the project? What have you found so far? What do you want to do with that? Well, this is a project that we've had in our portfolio for a long time. Uh, we first acquired it in 1996 when it was a brand new discovery of a rare type of lithium pegmatite enriched in a rare mineral called petalite. Mm -hmm. And we first found it, it was quite a significant discovery. And petalite is valued as an industrial mineral in glass ceramic products. Mm -hmm. And when we found it, there was a lot of interest in securing a supply of this from glass ceramic makers in North America. And uh, we thought we were going to be away the races, but unfortunately the, the lead manufacturer in that business uh, mm -hmm. decided to exit the cookware business, which was the primary pro mm -hmm. product line they needed it in, which changed yeah. the market. So we had to rethink the project. But I always knew it would um, have another day, and we've hung on to it ever since. And now it's uh, in a position to reactivate, taking advantage of all the new demand for mm -hmm. lithium that's been created uh, with energy storage and lithium ion battery. Mm -hmm. So let's dive into that a bit more, because I learned yesterday when we sat together and talked about your company, um, lithium is not the same lithium which is from from other producers or lithium is not lithium yeah i would call it like that what makes the difference i mean we, we often talk about in the markets oh the lithium price is like 14 15 16 thousand dollars a ton but uh, maybe 10 tons are that quality 100 tons are that quality can you explain a bit for our viewers how does it work in the lithium market? Sure. Um, a lot of your audience are probably resource investors mm -hmm. and used to investing uh, in traditional metal commodities, gold, silver, copper, nickel, zinc. Mm -hmm. yeah, so do. they like to think <laughs> of them as, as metals in, yeah. in terms of how they're valued and traded. 
But uh, lithium is not a metal in the traditional sense. It's an alkali element, lightest element on the periodic table. And in its uh, traded forms, it's actually um, uh, traded and used as a oxide compound. Mm -hmm. And in different forms, um, depending on how it's going to be used in its downstream applications. And of course, the battery application is just one commercial application mm -hmm, of lithium. Mm -hmm. And so uh, people have to look at it like an industrial mineral and you need to uh, produce it and design it and engineer that product precisely to the customer's requirements mm -hmm. so in you, terms of product purity you and specifications. You tailor customize it, right? That's right. Okay. Yeah. So it's, it's more like an industrial chemical, like a manufactured product than a traditional okay. commodity uh, in that sense. And investors need to uh, understand that in terms of looking at what the company is doing okay. and how they're going to be able to ensure that they're going to make a product that the customers will actually be able to accept and use yeah. at the end of the day. And yeah. that's not necessarily that easy to do. Okay, interesting. So, of course, uh, following question from my side, how do you do that? I mean, you want to go in production with that project, that's for sure, I would say. Um, you're, you will release a PA, I think, next month, right? In July, August, probably. And uh, then you want to do the feasibility next year. Um, but are you al already working on, let's say, the customization process uh, that you are able in the future to produce, like customized lithium? Yes, when we got this uh, project going again, um, we, we were basically starting from an advanced position in that mm -hmm. in the 90s when we looked at it for glass ceramics, we had already drilled off a fairly sizable uh, resource in the order of some 10 million tons. Mm -hmm. So we didn't have to do any... 43 compliant? Yes, it was 43 compliant mm -hmm. okay. uh, at the time. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, where we are now is not so much in drilling more holes in the ground to find more resources. Yeah. It was about how do we take that ore and uh, recover a lithium compound that will be a suitable product for today and tomorrow's battery market applications. Mm -hmm. So the first step for us to do is really do some processing on the ore to come up with a flow sheet mm -hmm. that would be appropriate for recovering that lithium compound for the battery makers going down the road. So that's what we've been doing for the last year is we had a $1.6 million work program to do a pilot plant, first to recover a concentrated lithium mineral called petalite. That mm -hmm. work was done at a facility in Germany, actually, and called Anzaplan. And um, since then, we produced about a ton of the um, concentrate. And now we are doing the next step, which is the hydrometallurgical process from which we will extract a lithium compound for the battery makers. Mm -hmm. And the product we're looking to, to make is called lithium hydroxide. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And you are satisfied so far with the results? So far so good. Um, okay. The thing that makes this uh, mineral really attractive for this uh, application is, and the reason it was attractive as an industrial mineral for glass mm -hmm. is it has no impurities in it. So mm -hmm. if there's no impurities to remove in the mineral, yeah, it gives you a fantastic. clearer path to getting to a high purity yeah. derivative product. Yeah. So we think that's what uh, the advantage this material mm -hmm. offers uh, in this new uh, market application. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Do you have any byproducts with it? Yes, these pegmatites contain a lot of other uh, minerals that can be used in industrial minerals applications. Mm -hmm. And we're looking at what those opportunities are now too with the intention of trying to sell everything that's in that ore yeah, so we don't makes have money any, for the company <laughs> and we don't have any waste to yeah. uh, to dispose of which that's also thing, reduces yeah. your overall mm -hmm. uh, uh, costs of production of, of the primary product the lithium mm -hmm. product fantastic um let's come to your uh, no, let's say before we swap to the tin project um can you say maybe two three words about uh, lithium supply demand Sure. Um, everybody's hearing about the transition to electric vehicles mm -hmm. and um, of course lithium ion battery is the rechargeable battery a solution for the electric vehicles uh, mm -hmm. today. And it really looks like it's going to be the solution for a long time to come. It's taken uh, a long time to develop that technology and it's mm -hmm. not going to be replaced uh, overnight with an alternative energy storage solutions. So um, if you believe that electric cars are here to stay, and um, most consumers uh, and auto manufacturers mm -hmm. seem to believe that, everyone's transitioning to that, mm -hmm. then you got to believe there's going to be uh, a rapid growth in demand for lithium mm -hmm. going forward here. I'm a believer in that. And um, 
it really doesn't look like the supply side is going to be able to easily adapt to that. It's, uh, it looks like the market's in deficit now. That's mm -hmm. having a, an effect of push, putting upward pressure on prices. Mm -hmm. And the market's not going to come back into balance uh, right away. It's yeah, going to take a absolutely. lot of new supply. <laughs> so it's uh, good yeah. news for us aspiring producers. Yeah, so you, yeah, you are an uh, emerging producer. You want to be in production. When do you think you might be earliest in production? Just a guess, just an estimate. Will it be from here, like 2019, 2020, or earlier? Yeah, it looks like we uh, may be able to get it into production in three to four years, mm -hmm. 2019, 2020, if uh, everything goes according to plan, we have sufficient capital mm -hmm. and uh, no um, unanticipated um, roadblocks in terms of uh, permitting yeah. or an environmental mm -hmm. assessment. Okay. But the next milestone is to complete that PEA. We'll be done the work that's needed Mm -hmm. on the process side to provide the input for that PEA mm -hmm. at the end of June and we'll get the PEA out mm -hmm. the summer and that would should yeah. um, give us the basis for accessing capital to move forward to the mm -hmm. feasibility study this year. Very good and I think you always have good support from the natives from the community right already? Yeah we, we've uh, been there so long uh, 20 they years now they know who we are <laughs> and uh, we've established a good reputation in yeah. the uh, in the community as as a company that has really uh, uh, adopted the principles of, of sustainability, uh, we want to demonstrate to everyone that we're going to develop that mm -hmm. resource um, in a way that reduces environmental impacts and maximizes mm -hmm. the benefits for yeah. the local communities, and including the First Nations. Mm -hmm. And people believe we're going to do that, and we're going to live up to that commitment. Perfect. Great. Let's move from, from lithium shortly to tin, because you have also, I would say, a sensational tin project, an old mine the Kentville uh, property. So I saw in your presentation, uh, you want to be quite fast in production if, if you get the money, right? Well, we've got an opportunity there that's mm -hmm. pretty interesting, actually. Um, this tin mine produced in the 80s and closed prematurely only because the price of tin dropped fairly dramatically in the late 1980s when the international tin cartel was disbanded. Mm -hmm. So there was a lot of ore left in the ground that was never mined, and there was a lot of broken ore uh, stockpiled on surface for future treatment that wow. never got, uh, got treated. Mm -hmm. So we're seeing an opportunity to redevelop that site uh, without creating a lot of new environmental impacts mm -hmm. and actually create a plan that will lead to the progressive remediation of the site by retreating the, uh, the stockpiled material to recover the tin. So that offers uh, potential for development in the short term in as, as little as uh, 18 months to wow. uh, get into production at a, mm -hmm. at a really low capex. What, what might be the capex? Well, our current estimate is in the order of uh, $20 million. Wow, that's not that much. I would say you, you should, if the economics are fine, I would say that you should easily find somebody to finance that, right? Well, we think so. There's a yeah. lot of interest in, uh, in new sources of tin concentrates uh, right now, and yeah. uh, we think we can provide a good product for the market in a yeah. relatively short time frame. Yeah, great. As I think also the tin markets moved also into a deficit, right? Yeah, there's uh, some supply has gone offline mm -hmm. on in the uh, traditional tin supply markets in Indonesia and South America, mm -hmm. and so there's... Uh, in Bolivia, I think, also something happened. Yes, some of the yep. uh, historic production in different mm -hmm. parts of the world has yep. uh, gone offline, so mm -hmm. there needs to be new supply to replace that. Mm -hmm. But with the whole bear market and resources the last yeah. couple of years, there's not been a lot of investment in right. new tin supply and creating yeah. an opportunity. Yeah, but it's a big opportunity for you guys, obviously. Last question, uh, because we have been talking about project financing, how much money is in the bank? How, how long will it take it? We, we've been raising money incrementally to keep ourselves topped up over mm -hmm. the last couple of years while we endure this bear market in the resource sector, which seems to be uh, recovering now. And we have about two and a half million dollars in the treasury right now, which takes us through the next milestones, which is a PEA on both projects actually this summer. Oh, very good. So we'll be in a position um, this fall with, uh, with the strength of those uh, economic assessments yeah. to Super. access the capital markets again. and and move it forward and create more value for our shareholders. Perfect. Then let's do that. Keep fingers crossed. Thank you very much, Don. Uh, great uh, interview. And uh, yeah, I like what I hear, honestly. And uh, yeah, I wish you all the best for that and uh, look forward to an update.
Thank you very much. <laughs> Pleasure to do this again. Thank Yogi. you. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, that was uh, Don Boba, the president and CEO of uh, Avalon Advanced uh, Materials. And yeah, you heard it. The company has uh, two assets which they want to bring into production. The tin asset might be quite fast within the next 18 months, uh, but the even uh, larger and longer term lithium um, um, asset, yeah, would maybe take three to four years. Um, but uh, they are well advanced. They well understand both projects and uh, lithium is hot. Tin is hot, both um, yeah, metals, I would call it, but we just learned lithium is a chemical uh, product, honestly, are in, uh, um, um, yeah, in, in undersupply. So that means uh, we have a, a nice gap here with supply demand. Prices will move up as they did with lithium tin. I'm quite uh, yeah, sure they will follow. And the company still has some rare earth uh, metals projects here. Very interesting in Ontario, in Canada, they are working. And uh, yeah, so from that side, no yeah, real political risk, I would call it. Check out the company. That was it from Zurich. Thanks and bye-bye.